Hello, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the successor of Azure AD B2C and thus I will uh, kind of um, have follow up to my pretty successful B2C series. So um, first of all, um, you have to keep in mind that everything I show you today is still in preview. Um, I will not be able to uh, show everything full fledged. I will go through the new experience, a little bit of uh, looking together with you at the documentation, the new UI experience where you find stuff, what is uh, the difference which I already uh, saw. And uh, this is an early preview uh, again. So um, I'm myself learning this stuff and I just want to share my current sta um, state of information with you. Um, and um, you can expect more videos about this to come. Uh, okay, with that, uh, let's jump right into it and I will hop over to my screen here. Uh, so hopefully I will not make my mistakes all over again, which I did in the last videos to kind of block um, the content with my face. Let's see if I will make, um, will be able to do this. So this is the starting point of my research and I will post all the links uh, in the description of the video. Um, so the new name, obviously is Microsoft Entra External ID. So this is coming from the fact that if you don't know, Microsoft is just renaming um, um, Azure AD all over the place. You have hints in the portal, you will see that. You have hints in the documentation that Azure AD will become Entra ID. So, and this now uh, sticks to the name of B2C2 which is uh, Microsoft Entra External ID. So if you follow up uh, a little bit deeper here in this um, thingy, you will finally land in the starting point of the documentation. So uh, same here, you can see here the note that Active Azure Active Directory is being renamed Microsoft Entra ID. No action is needed from you. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I will show you um, some point in the documentation where it kind of says, yeah, if you don't do anything, uh, then don't expect to get in touch with the latest features we will provide. I will show you that in a second. So this is now um, um, a new kind of experience. So enter external ID for customers. It's a CIA, C AM, so CIA, CIA and then M. <laughs> CA, okay, cool. Um, whatever. Um, let's don't get into this too deep. <laughs> I think into the naming. Um, it's just an acronym. So it will be explained what that is uh, in a second. So here is the overview of the documentation. I drilled into it a little bit. This is the starting point. So that explains now what CIAM is standing for. It is Customer Identity Access Management, which I didn't use this acronym, so obviously it's uh, a thingy um, in the internet. I didn't know that, so now I know. So basically that's it. And then the last part of the documentation I want to um, discuss with you is uh, about Azure AD for customers. This is kind of the overview and it, and it wants to explain what it actually is. So um, as it, if you look here into the structure, of this document, um, you can see this is kind of describing um, what B2C currently is or was or whatever. So create a dedicated tenant. Okay, we got that. Customize sign in to your customer facing apps. Yes, we got that, but it's different now. Um, and I think better. I don't know yet because I didn't try it out that deep. Design user flows. We know that. Uh, add your own business logic, whatever that means. Uh, Microsoft Android security and re reliability. Uh, yeah, about Azure AD B2C, where here is something interesting. I never saw that. Let me quickly jump into that. If you're a new customer, you might be wondering which solution is better, B2C or Android ID. Opt for the current B2C if you have an immediate need to deploy to production ready built for customer facing app. Yes, but here it is. Keep in mind that the next generation external ID platform represents the future of CIA, CIAM for Microsoft. So this thingy says, yeah, you don't have to do anything. I get it. So it's, uh, in other words, Microsoft will not shut down your current B2C tenants. Thank you for this, Microsoft. 
but it also says that if you have existing solutions in B2C, you definitely should consider moving. So that is one of the parts where I'm very curious for the time after the preview uh, phase, because it's not so easy to shift your CIAM when it's in productive use. Um, at least it's not for me, because you know I don't want to bother my users with the fact that they have to re-register into my application, which is behind the B2C, the current one, in order to get a new experience. So I'm very curious if there will be a migration path or what the solution would be. So I will get in touch with you guys and girls if I have any news on that. So, but uh, that was exactly what I wanted you to, to show. I didn't, I was not aware that it says B2C here. So also you should be to see up for the next, oh no, that is the only reason <laughs> uh, in Microsoft terms to use B2C because uh, pretty much because the other step, the Entra ID external is not ready yet. I will show you what I saw, what's not ready. Um, but you know, that's it. And if you're starting, you know, on a on an empty plate, you can start with external ID, which I don't believe you can do because there are some stuff is missing. And with that, I will hop over to my um, to my Azure site. Um, I have to like a preface. I will have after I record this video to blur a lot of stuff uh, because again, I'm showing um, AAD or Entra stuff and Entra stuff always means I have to blur like an idiot. So I hope this uh, will be a pretty usable video in the result, um, but I'm not sure. Um, pardon me if I mess it up, um, I give my best. So with that, let's hop over to the Entra portal. So uh, what you see here is uh, kind of, let me uh, zoom here. No, that was the wrong one, that one. So entra.microsoft.com. This is kind of the new experience. Um, where you not only can do um, uh, identity, you can also do protection, identity governance, and so on. Uh, all sorts of things will, which were or are currently kind of scattered around. And Microsoft obviously is now doing the Entra Admin Center as the default um, landing page for everything which has to do with identity, um, as far as I understand it. So <clears throat> you have kind of some uh, jump tools. And then if you go to identity and open it up, you can see here at the bottom, this is basically the successor of B2C, external identities. So that what it is. If I'm currently going into it, I uh, hope that it's not saying too much uh, because currently um, I never set up um, uh, new B2C, but as you can see here, it tells me it, it's kind of familiar, custom user attributes, API connectors, identity providers, user flows, blah, blah, blah. So, but this is currently looking at my company uh, Azure AD. So that is showing me this Azure AD, but this Azure AD is not an Entra ID external identity tenant. So the, the same is true for the former B2C tenant, which is not an AAD, but it looks, it says something similar with the AAD, whatever, you know what I mean. So the question is, how do you start into Entra ID? And what I will do today with you, I will create a new tenant, um, a new Entra ID tenant uh, using this portal. And then we will have a look at it. Uh, kind of, I'm trying to make it not too confusing and pause wherever is long running operation. So it's faster for you. So let's go there. So in order to create uh, a new uh, thingy, last time I was here, because I tried one beforehand, last time I was here, it was giving me this button experience, but now it's gone. So there was a button uh, for maybe uh, this one, I don't know. But anyways, if you want to have the entry point for creating this, this is no longer the Azure portal. So you don't go to portal.azure.com and create a new thing and search for where's Entra external identity. You will not find it there. You go to the overview of identity, for instance, and 
this is where my blurring will start to occur but anyways and then you go to this manage tenants thingy here click it now you get all your tenants and again i have to blur this out interesting fact is all the entries which has this purple symbol here are b2c's so um i will now create a new tenant and this is now the new experience so you can select here if you want to create a normal azure uh, or entra id tenant let me get the wording straight or and this is where it shows you it's still preview if you want to use entra id external identity so c i a m <laughs> i still have to laugh anyways so let's select this option and now um you have two options and this is the first thing which stuck out for me so previously what you did you went to azure portal and created a new b2c tenant if you don't know what i'm talking about switch to one of my other videos about b2c and there should be a video available for you which shows you how to do that it's two years old or something like that so it changed a little bit but in principle it's this experience here now uh, you are not in the azure portal and that is why he gives you these options which weren't there before because before when you created a new b2c you had to do it inside a subscription you had to provide a subscription where this b2c should live in and be paid on this is no longer the only option you have so you can start with a trial version which is not connected to a subscription and thus it is not billable for microsoft which means it's only valid for 30 days i think that was not available for b2c because of the aforementioned reasons but anyway um now we should use the trial start a trial so uh this lets me sign up a trial yeah i got it uh, so now you have some settings here which is uh, this this blade is pre-populated you have to be very careful to open it up because this is definitely not what you want to do so uh let's call this coding freaks um entra or whatever coding freaks entra and um so let's give it a nice name coding freaks entra can i do that i i think so so this is the domain name coding freaks entra dot on microsoft.com and no i don't want to live in the united states uh and i want to live in germany because that's where i come from and i'm telling you that because i will delete this i i don't care i'm telling you that this option is kind of if you're in a country like me in germany where this gdpr thing is kind of hot um and you're talking about identities this is a very very important option and it was in uh, b2c but this is an important option the geographic location and it cannot be changed later so wherever you create your tenant because this creates a tenant this stuck uh, sticks stucks <laughs> okay go on continue and that's it okay uh, i i thought there was another thing going on no it's not so now he's creating a tenant um for us and it's kind of the same experience now going on like it was with sorry with b2c um it's creating an azure tenant okay but this tenant is specific and i have to say as far as i could see it's not the same as a b2c tenant we will see that in a second for now uh, i will pause the video um, and then i will uh, come back when this is done so here we are um, so it's now created and um, as you can see he i did did not click anything he just brought me right into um, the tenant itself so currently what you also see it's in german which does not help very much the first things first like every time in an azure ad let's go to language and region change this to english and this one i i used to change this in this combination so i hope that this now lands again on the correct page no it does not external identities overview so here we are um now in the starting page now i am in my new tenant which is exactly what i wanted and now <laughs> i have this experience so what i'm missing here is where was it 
he brought me to the customization of my tenant. Let me see if I find it again. And I think it might be in the, in the, oh, can I find it? Oh, we will see. Okay, let's concentrate on the B2C stuff first. And then I will try to find the customization because it's kind of interesting. The new, new UI experience, which you saw in German just a few seconds ago for UI customization, setup of the tenant. And so Microsoft is reworking this. And in Entra, you have a complete new UI, even for your uh, Azure AD, so Entra ID tenant. So first of all, this is new to me, cross tenant access settings. So um, I don't even know what this is. Organization unit settings use cross tenant access settings to manage collaborate with, with external Azure AD organization for non Azure AD or use collaborating setting. Um, interesting. So at first organization to configure organization specific settings. Okay. Can I add my, uh, com my company? What about? This is the tenant ID, right? Correct. So one organization found, I added my company tenant. This is new and cool. So next one, we will see. Impact all cover, blah, blah, blah. So default settings apply to all external Azure ID not listed on the organization settings tab, not here. These default settings can be modified, but not deleted. Okay, no, please back. So what is it? B2B collaboration, okay. Trust settings disabled. Edit outbound. Oh, I have to read about this more. This is new. What it what it stems from? Mm -hmm. Okay, this now is kind of the replacement or the one of the part of the replacement of the fact that formerly, when we go now to the identity providers, if you um, remember what you had you had a list of like identity providers like twitter google whatever and google facebook is still here but twitter is not a button microsoft account is, is uh, still here but what was missing in the b2c was azure active directory i had a video on how to set it up you have to do a custom open id provider with certain settings this is obviously i didn't try it out before so we will experience this today this is obviously no longer the case because when you click it it now tells you users with an azure active directory account can be invited via email and sign in without further configuration so meaning um that you don't have to set up open id explicit explicitly here what you instead will will be able to do is to define like um, other organizations you are willing to work with. And then I guess you can put them into user flow. We will see that in a second. So the other things are pretty much as they were. So if you want to add Google as your provider, you just need client ID, client secret, which you get from the Google developer console, uh, where you need to create another app uh, the Google app registration, and then get those two information from there and put it in here. So, um, basically saying this um, Entra um, external ID is allowed to talk with my Google account or whatever. So, okay, uh, SAML and uh, WS Federation is still available here on the top, but it's now on the top and not longer in, uh, what was it called, identity experience framework. I think that is where uh, this was. I'm not going into detail here. Facebook is here. So we just will go on. External collaboration setting. So external, so this is interesting now. Um, we're working on it, so it's preview, it's fine. But now external collaboration, collaboration setting let you specify what roles in your organization can invite external users for B2B collaboration and includes options for allowing or blocking specific domains and restricting what extended guest users can see in your Azure AD directory, so in that directory. So that is currently not working, but the interesting fact is you can now invite from, uh, so coworkers for your um, Entra external ID to help you set up things, or maybe they are developers in your project, but not in your um, Entra ID. So you can invite them obviously from other places later, but not now. 
Cool. Custom user attributes, kind of the same experience as it was before, as far as I can see. Come on, load it, please. He's not doing it. Oh, there it is. So you can add, and I checked there are no new data types. If you were hoping for date or something, no, it's not there. But this is, I think, not a limitation of, um, of Entry ID. This is a limitation of the fact that all of this is basically based on uh, JSON. And the fact that the tokens where the claims will be in, they cannot provide any validation for uh, daytime uh, at all. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, create custom extension. So custom extension can be used by application to customize authentication experience and integrate external. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that is interesting because uh, we will, I will make a, a own screencast about that later in, in the future. You need stuff like that. If you, for instance, want to bring in your own, let's say, SMS provider for validating users or whatever you have, and then you can put in an own extension and then you can make it part of your uh, user flows by creating uh, custom user flows. Um, currently, this is only possible by using the XML-based syntax and then upload user flows. We will see if there will be improvement. Improvements, okay. So let's go over to the good old friend of user flows and let's try now with our cross-tenant settings set up if we can create a user flow uh, for sign in, sign up. So <clears throat> what this is, I cannot check this one. Okay, sign in, sign up. Here we go. Um, the only way I can use this currently is email accounts with password. I will use with password. And let's say I have a display name which I want to enforce. And now you can see I cannot click on um, Azure Active Directory sign up. I don't know why. Again, this is the early preview and maybe I'm missing something here. I don't know exactly, but I suggest it has something to do with the missing pieces here. We will see. So I will just create a sign up and sign in flow. It's still preview, as you can see. But I hope that from here I can actually test it out. So to see if it works. So here it is. Sign up, sign in. What sticks out is this um, stupid B2C underline underscore one underscore seems to be gone. I don't know, maybe not. And I cannot try it out. Hmm. This is kind of the same dialogue, but the run thingy is, uh, we would love to have feedback. No, um, but anyways, let's see, what do we have? Uh, we have, email with password and I cannot click on that too. User attributes I could add besides display name stuff. Okay, page layouts, interesting. Here's the UI customization. Uh, user flow attributes, body text. Okay, I could change the messages and what is displayed. Oh, uh -huh. okay, interesting. I don't remember that in B2C. Mm, okay, more UI customization stuff. Name, display name, okay, cool. Languages, okay, like it was before, I guess. Yes, it's kind of what is Catalan, is that new? I don't know. And applications, uh, let's add an application. Maybe that was missing. Uh, quick start application, yeah, let's do it. Select. So there was an application deployed. Aha. Uh -huh. So wait a second. I can use, that is new, isn't it? I can, in the portal, say this application is part of this user flow. That wasn't there because that was decided by the application is configured. There was an application, of course, with client ID and whatever. Ah, now I can see, but can I test it out now? Now that I have an application? No, I cannot. Okay. Uh, I don't know what I do wrong, but let's go back here maybe. Maybe I was missing, where are the applications here, by the way? Show more. Overview, identity provider, that, 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 okay. But I cannot see where I can manage my applications here. Seems so that this is not an option here. Okay, cool. Uh, is it somewhere here? App registrations. This should show me the quick start, here it is. 
Okay. Um, and the quick start here has, of course, authentication. This is JWTMS. I thought so. So he is going, if you use this application, he's going back to JWTMS to show you the token. That is a trick, which is pretty, pretty often used. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I back to the external identities. Uh, I'm not sure. Self-service sign up, configure user flows, invite guest users to collaborate, protect your application and brand, conditional access, okay, manage provisioning and access, identity governance. So, I'm pretty sure I saw the run thingy somewhere and I don't get, got a second, no, again, no. I want to try this out. Hmm. How can I try out my settings? Is that not possible yet? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe you guys have something or found something and you know what, what I'm missing here and we'll put it in the comments and I will make a new video. Let's see. Okay. So uh, another thing which I wanted to show you guys was to um, the management of the <clears throat> options of my tenant so user group devices application roles billing settings uh, preview hub what is that tenant overview okay preview features i don't need that what i wanted you to show was the new company branding here it is i think that's it so <clears throat> um when you go from the company branding to the edit section, so now this looks familiar, okay, because it was kind of re ramped the experience in um, Azure AD already, but now it's in the Entra Admin Center and you have far more options to set up your tenant. Keep aware, whatever you do here, it's always in the context of the selected Coding Freaks Entra tenant. That is not for my company tenant. So you have the usual background background image stuff and so on you have i never saw that different uh, templates for um, full screen background or partial screen background you can now select well i want to use that i think here is the here is the option uh, to review let's do that i think that's cor correct so let's browse for some files i have some logos here on my machine let me go to the correct folder which is coding freaks and then this one, and let's see, what do I have? The FAF icon, okay. Um, do I have an icon here? Uh, that would be the perfect, what do, do they want? Select files, I don't know, uh, they don't care. So let's do uh, 16, no, 16 is not good. Let's do the 70, maybe he accepts that, no. It's too large, okay, got you. Uh, 16 pixel, maybe. I have a lot of bad naming here, as you can see. Oh, that's okay. So image size 32 by 32, background image. Good. Let's take the big one, background default. Is that okay for you? Yeah, it is. So we have this, this is kind of blurry. I get it. So let's make it pretty, I don't know, dark. Next layout. Let's do that one. Is it? How do I select this one? Yeah, okay. So now uh, you can hide header or show a header which is by default hidden, footer the same thing. I don't think that footer and header was a thing before. Maybe I'm wrong. You can upload CSS, just saying. Header logo, I don't care. Uh, let's leave it, footer. Uh, I disabled footer, so that is why I cannot put anything in here. So you can try it out. Banner logo, I don't care. Sign in form, common URL, collection display text, yeah kind of everything is cool the light and dark theme square logo i get it so custom text can be added that is also nice and later used i guess and then uh, i can save this and i think i think i saw the check of this the tryout somewhere here Default, customize, add browser language, edit, sign in experience. I swear I saw it in this portal. But <coughs> I cannot see it now. Uh, so, company branding. 
let's favorite this because I will need it later. Uh, no, it's not there. Sorry, guys, I cannot show you the experience, um, but I'm pretty sure I saw it <clears throat> in earlier days. Maybe let me think of if I go to an incognito browser and I go to, uh, let's see, what's the ID of this tenant? Can I see it here? I should see it here in the overview. Uh, overview, 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 manage tenants. I don't want to go there because I have to blur again. <laughs> Sorry. So it was maybe it was in external identities overview. Whenever I need a tenant ID, I don't find it. Uh, because I want to sign in. Let me do it on another window and then I drag it in. Let's do an in private window. Uh, so I will go to the Azure portal hoping that he brings me into, let me sign in myself. Uh, yeah, I thought that. So <clears throat> now I have to do MFA. It's not the new tenant because I did not configure MFA in my new tenant. At least I think so. Let me do that. Little number game Microsoft now wants from us in passwordless authentication. And let me see if I can, yeah, if I can switch to my other tenant. I will do that on the other screen, pardon me. So now I'm here and this is what I wanted him. And now I can get my Azure AD and then I hopefully can show you the experience. Uh, the login experience, that's what I want to say. Um, so again, first start to put it on English. So obviously the two portals that what I learned now are not sharing the language settings. This portal and the one you don't see currently. Sorry again for you guys not seeing what I do, but I'm talking ahead. Uh, so mm, get started overview. There it is. So I close this and now let's open a new in private window. Let's see if I go here to portal azure com slash and this is the ID of my entry ID tenant and this forces him to go. So now you see that my settings are uh, used. So we have keep in mind this is a B2C successor. I don't think that this was possible that easy. You could do it with custom layouts. But now it's very easy to do and kind of the same experience like it is in Entry ID since several months. So my background image is here. I have my FAF icon set. Okay, so I should be able to log in here. And this is now my, hopefully my password. Why is it my password? No, because my user with which I created uh, the tenant is um, the invited B2B invited user from my other tenant. So that is why I know my password. I never had to set up a password. Okay. So this is it. Here it is. Uh, so, okay. It's working. Interestingly enough, if you go now here to B2C because you think, well, is this entry ID maybe just a B2C? No, it's not because the B2C thing here says, do you want to deploy a B2C? So there is no B2C option, as you can see, um, or let's say here, this is the correct one. So it says, well, here is in this tenant, there is no B2C in here. What I want to say is Entra ID external identity is not just a new name for B2C. It actually is something new. That is what I wanted to tell you. So for instance, um, uh, when we go back to our Entra ID portal, let's do this here. And now I have to blur again because I need to show you something. When I go to the overview and I go to manage tenants <clears throat> and let me uh, maybe set this as my favorite. Let's remove those and let's use my new one, which is uh, Coding Freaks Entra and this one as my tenant and then I sort by favorite and now I can unblur the two here on the top. Note to myself in the future, kind of. So here is the one we created 
And this is the one, the default I am currently logged in. And this is now my B2C I used for my other uh, video series. And as you can see, they have they share the same symbol, but they're not the same, which is interesting, right? <clears throat> so um, this will get very, very exciting. The next future I will see and I will hopefully have the time to inform you guys what's going on. The last thing I want to show you today is how to get rid of this Coding Freaks Entry ID thingy. And turns out it's um, as hard as it was before uh, to delete it. So just to show you, if I go here and try to delete the thing, the same assistant experience is coming up. <clears throat> and it tells me this things. So <clears throat> first of all, I think there's a bug in the UI again, so because the delete button is disabled and you think, oh, and then you click refresh and now it's enabled. Okay. Uh, so, but those things are meant to be there. If you try to delete now, he's trying to delete and I think he will fail. Yes. Unable to delete 10 encoding freaks entra, known issues exist, blah, blah, blah. So turns out, I don't know if it wasn't possible to put a red thing here instead of a yellow one, which means, ah, kind of a warning, but you know, we still enable delete. Thanks for nothing. Um, so turns out, because I tried this again, as far as I know, you have to delete everything here, which is kind of interesting in a second. <clears throat> okay, let's go to back to my external identities uh, stuff here to the overview. And maybe I should open this in another tab. So let's tap out in another tab so I can come back here. And now let's go to the Entra ID stuff and try to delete the tenant. Okay, so I think it's good to know how this works. So first of all, what we need to delete is the user flow. Um, it's here. So let's delete the user flow. Okay, let's do that. User flow and can I from here delete? Yes. Can I delete it? I'm not sure. I think so. It's deleted. So refresh this. Uh, I mean, refresh it. I mean, refresh it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's give him some time. Another thing which is very important is we need to uh, remove all app. What is it? Uh, subscriptions is not there. Um, but I don't think that this is legit, but we will see. Refresh, it's not refreshing. So we need to delete the app registrations. So let's go here to eh, applications, app registrations. And now it gets weird. So we delete that one because this was deployed as a quick start sample with JWTMS, you remember? Okay, let's delete it. It's not a big deal. I understand. Go away. So. That is easy, but now this one says B2C extension app, which is there for B2C, do not modify. <laughs> and turns out, ignore that warning, because when you delete it, it's kind of saying, do whatever you want. Okay, cool. So let's go there, delete it. Uh, and trust me, I tried to delete this tenant without touching this, it's not going to happen. So we got rid of that. So now refresh. And now this one is green, but this one not. User flow, delay, delete all user flows. What do you want from me? I think I did this. User flows, no user flows found, see? So let's ignore this warning and this one too. Let's try to delete now. And that's it. Uh, the point here is, what I wanted you to, to tell is, you need to take the, the yellow or orange thingies as red ones. Okay. Um, so, and at the same point, you sometimes need to ignore them because this one is just telling you, well, actually I'm not able to do that for you because you don't have the permissions on the tenant where your subscriptions are because you never link subscriptions. So that is why this is kind of weird. So they, sh maybe they uh, improve on that. And this one is kind of broken. Because now I cannot refresh, but because I'm out, was scheduled for deletion, please click to sign out after signing back and so on. So that's basically it. Uh, so the conclusion here is that uh, this is what you can expect in the future for 
um, when you deal with external identities that you don't want to invite in your Azure AD or Entry ID, uh, it is not ready. You cannot use it despite what the documentation says, if you ask me, <clears throat> because you not even are able currently to uh, test out your user flows, which is the bare minimum to see is my UI working and whatever. I think you easily can use uh, your old um, app setup with the client ID, client secret, whatever you had. Uh, that should work, but uh, don't use it yet and uh, wait until Coding Freaks gives you more information. I think that is the most viable information source for that, isn't it? Okay, um, just kidding. Oh, not really. I don't know. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, please let me know if you want to have more of content like this and um, see you next time.